So Unnatural Vegan just went off on Ryan from Happy Healthy Vegan for telling Furious Pete that meat causes cancer. It turns out, Ryan's right. Science bomb, coming up five reasons that meat causes cancer according to science. Ryan did a great job explaining how the correlation argument can just be used as a cop-out for literally anything. But he only touched on the tip of the iceberg of how cancer is actually caused by meat. Let's explore how correlation can graduate into causation once you've studied the mechanisms of the cause. We can start with one of the most widely accepted causes of cancer, undisputed, and that is, number one, sex hormones. Let's look at the most common cancer in women, breast cancer, and the sex hormone estrogen. It is so accepted that estrogen causes cancer that the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences deemed estrogen a cancer-causing agent. Cancer-causing. You could distract yourself with xenoestrogens in chemicals like BPA, but it's well documented that actual mammal estrogens, like in animal products, can be 10,000 times more potent in the human body. But how do we end up actually eating or consuming mammal estrogens? Well, it turns out that meat has it. Chickens make it, pigs make it, cows make it, and we can use it. And don't forget, 95% of cattle are injected with extra estrogen, which leads their meat to have four times as much estrogen as normal meat. Here's a study published in the Oxford Journals showing that meat consumption can be responsible for 40% of dietary estrogen. Eating meat equals a massive increase in estrogen, which is undeniably a cause of cancer. So eating meat, cause of cancer number one, done. Not to mention the remaining 60% of estrogen in our diet is actually from dairy products. Different subject, but also an animal product. Number two, IGF-1 and animal protein. This might be the most important link between meat and cancer. IGF-1, or insulin-like growth factor one, is a growth hormone. It's not only naturally occurring in meat, but animal protein actually triggers our liver to create massive amounts of IGF-1. This is why vegans have the lowest level of IGF-1 out of any diet, and they also have the highest levels of a protein that binds extra IGF-1 that the body doesn't need. Like this study shows, we've known for a while that IGF-1 is correlated with cancer, but let's explore the actual mechanism that IGF-1 uses to cause cancer. As a growth hormone, IGF-1 triggers cancer growth to begin with. Here's how it works in breast cells. Also, it spreads cancer, it metastasizes cancer, it brings it into bones, the liver, the blood, and even the brain. Also very important, it promotes angiogenesis, or the creation of new blood cells that feed cancer. This is such an important topic that there was a TED talk on it. William Lee went and said that plant foods can be the most effective way to treat cancer. He even mentions how angiogenesis can be prevented with a healthy diet and points to Dean Ornish's study, but fails to mention that that's a vegan diet they're studying. To drive this point home, here's what happens when you put people on a plant-based diet. Not only does cancer growth massively decrease, but you can actually measure their levels of IGF-1 going down. This brings me to number three, protein fermentation and hydrogen sulfide. Protein is not meant to ferment in our body. We're pretty good at digesting all of our plant proteins before they get into our large intestine where fermentation takes place. But with meat protein, up to 12 grams per day can make it into our large intestine, as this study shows. This is where sulfurous animal proteins break down into hydrogen sulfide, which is a highly toxic, rotten egg smelling gas that is known as a genotoxin, meaning it can destroy your DNA. Here's a study demonstrating the connection between hydrogen sulfide and DNA damage. It has a chart showing that as concentrations of sulfides increase, DNA damage also increases. Turns out that hydrogen sulfide also causes lesions or ulcers like those in ulcerative colitis. That means that hydrogen sulfide, a genotoxin, can enter your bloodstream and circulate to anywhere. It's possible that furious Pete's testicular cancer was in some part caused by hydrogen sulfide just destroying his DNA, making its way down to his testicles and just wreaking havoc. Number four, mutagenic compounds in meat. 
This one will be very quick, but as it turns out, as you cook meat proteins at high temperatures, they turn into polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which are potent carcinogens. I could go more deeply into this, but it's so widely accepted that there's an entire page on cancer.gov dedicated to this subject. It even goes into how the smoke from meat causes cancer as well. Number five, cholesterol feeds cancer. Cholesterol is only present in animal products. It's not present in any plant foods at all. This is relatively new research, and I'm sure most vegans don't even know about this. But according to this study, cholesterol is capable of regulating proliferation, migration, and signaling pathways in breast cancer. They can also control cancer growth in mice by manipulating levels of cholesterol. So if that's not a cause, I don't know what a cause is. Now that we've established the causation between meat and cancer, we can go into two bonus reasons of how a plant-based diet could help treat, possibly reverse cancer, maybe Pete's testicular cancer. Number one is telomeres. Telomeres are little strands on the end of your DNA that as you age, wear away. It's a bit like the fuse on a bomb, and as it wears out, it gets closer and closer to exploding and causing cancer and DNA damage. And astoundingly, if you put someone on a plant-based diet, they can actually rebuild their telomeres, reversing aging and snuffing out cancer. Number two, antioxidants. Plant-based diet is extremely rich in antioxidants, and antioxidants are not found in animal foods whatsoever. And if you're trying to supplement antioxidants, a lot of times they'll have no effect or sometimes even a harmful effect. And antioxidants essentially act as little linebackers against the free radicals that are created by our metabolism and happen to be around our body, like toxins and things like that. And finally, just a reminder that a plant-based diet reduces your IGF-1 levels, which, again, promote every stage of cancer development. In conclusion, Ryan from Happy Healthy Vegan was right. And somehow, maybe magically, Unnatural Vegan will see this video and realize that a few decades ago, maybe the correlation argument was valid when we didn't have more data and more science, but now the causations between meat and cancer are extremely well established, and hopefully she can see that. And finally, I highly doubt that Furious Pete will ever set eyes on this video because of just how much vegan content is being thrown at him right now and how he's probably just feeling attacked, but if somehow he does, hopefully he can set his differences aside and realize that a plant-based diet could actually save his ass. Thank you for watching.